Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to show you how finally in .NET 8 authentication and identity in general has been made awesome. It was simplified in a very big way and it is effectively fixed because identity and auth in general in .NET has been a big pain point for years. It's actually one of the most ranted about things in modern.net and Microsoft put people like David Fowler behind the project just to see if we can do better and spoiler alert we can in this video I'm going to show you what changed how easy it is to set up and how you can use it if you like that of content and you want to see more make sure you subscribe and for more training check out our courses on dometrain.com now quick announcement before I move on we have a brand new course on dome train called getting started with domain driven design that has been one of the most requested topics for courses on dome train and is finally here and is authored by the excellent educator and content creator Amikai Mantinmand. Now, in case you don't know, Amikai has his own YouTube channel, link in the description, give him a sub, but he's also a software engineer in Microsoft whose code powers technologies behind things like Microsoft Office, so literally hundreds of millions of users a month use the stuff he writes. He's an expert on the topic and he actually runs training like that in Microsoft as well, so you're getting the highest quality possible, which is what I wanted to offer with Dome Train in the first place. Now, to celebrate the launch, I'd like to offer the first 500 of you a 20% discount code on the course so use code ddd20 at checkout to claim it and trust me when i say these do go quick so if you want to buy it buy it now also if you buy this getting started ddd course you will also get a special discount code when the deep dive and advanced versions of this ddd course are out so you can double dip in discounts all right enough with that back to the video all right so let me show you what i have here i have a simple dotnet 8 asp.net core api and it has nothing we just have the builder and that is it. And the reason why I'm choosing to go forward with this approach is to show you how simple it is to convert this into something that has identity and auth in it. Now, first, identity needs a user. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create my user over here, and that is going to extend the identity user class. And that is it. I have a user. So let's go ahead and do some wiring up over here. So we're going to go into the services and say builder.services.add authentication and by default you can use a, a cookie scheme but what i'm going to use is i'm going to say add bearer token and then i'm going to use identity constants to specify the bearer scheme now this is not a json web token it is still a bearer token in the same way that jot is a bearer token and it is still a self-contained stateless token but it is not the same format so do not be confused now with that in place i can go and say services dot add authorization builder over here so this will add all the necessary services and in terms of auth directly that is it now to simplify the setup i'm actually going to use anti-framework core to store my user data you don't have to you can use whatever you want or you can roll your own version but anti-framework especially in dotnet 8 is really really fast and unless you really need that minor thing you can get out of manually writing or your SQL, I actually recommend just using EF8. Now, because of all that, we're going to use some NuGet packages to help with this process. So the first thing I'm going to use is the Microsoft.ASP.NET Core.Identity dot entry framework core package so let's go ahead and add that then i'm going to need a provider i could use in memory but that sort of feels like cheating i want to show you how you can actually do this with a real database so for that i'm going to use the sqlite one and we're going to build migrations and everything and then because we need migrations i'm also going to add the design package of entry framework core so let's go ahead and add that and now what we will need first is of course a db context so class app db context and have that extend the identity db context with my user as the user of course we're going to add the constructor so let's go ahead and do that sort of the bulk standard constructor over here and now i can go ahead and register the db context so dot add db context app db context and wire it up here in the settings so use sqlite i'm just gonna say that data source equals app.db and that is it and now we need to add identity so builder.services.add identity core my user is the user i want to use i'm going to say add anti framework stores and in this case i'm going to specify the db context and then i'm also going to say add api endpoints and that is it that's all the service setup i need now on its own not much has changed here but it's the next part that really sort of changes the game Previously, if you want to have login endpoints, registration endpoints, token refreshing endpoints, you had to sort of manually map everything, but now you no longer have to. All you need to do is say app.map 
identity API and specify the user object. And that is it. This will add all those endpoints for you. So for example, if you add an endpoint that needs auth, for example, map get, and I'm going to have it on the root, and I'm going to have the claims principal object over here representing the user. And that is a special type that minimal APIs will just specially inject and detect based on auth in your request. Uh, then I can say something like hello and then use the name. So user dot identity dot name. This should not be nullable and it should not be nullable because I will require authorization here. And that's it. That's all the setup you need. Now we can go ahead and create and run our migrations. So to do that, I'm going to say .NET EF migrations add initial create, and this will build the initial migrations based on my user and everything. As you can see, they have been created here. Excellent. And then I'm going to go ahead and say .NET EF database update to create my SQLite file and everything. So the API can just run and work. And as you can see, I have that here with all the tables and in this case, no users yet. So that's it. I'm ready now. I can go ahead and just run this API and register, log in and refresh my token. Let's see how all that works. First, I'm going to go to Postman. And if I try to call the root endpoint over here, then as you can see, I'm getting a 401 unauthorized. There is no token. There is nothing. And I do require authorization, so I cannot be off in. But I can register. I can say Nick Chaps is a username. I can say password um, one exclamation mark as the password. Do not use that password. And then things like Nick at dometrain.com as the email. And that will create, as you can see over here, a user. And I can go to ASP.NET users here and you can see my user with all the details created. In return, I can grab that email and go to login and login. And I'm using a bearer token, like I said, not a jot, but the same sort of concept in a way. And then I can provide the password. So if the password is wrong, so let's say a password and then three in the end or um, the pound sign, then as you can see, I'm getting unauthorized and failed. But if I use the right password, then I will get not only an access token, but we also have a refresh token. Now, the purpose of the refresh token is to be stored locally on the client and be used if that access token has expired. You know how Facebook or Instagram or whatever app you're using, except for Microsoft, doesn't ask you to re-log in every time, even after days? That's because they have a long-lived refresh token stored locally that they can use for you to automatically re-log in. So we have that behavior by default now. So if I grab the access token over here and I can go to the get endpoint and I paste it as a bearer token over here, then as you can see, I'm getting hello, Nick at Domtrain. And what I want to show you is that there is actually, if I clear all the console, there is no request to check if the token is valid or whatever on the database. So when I call this, you see nothing happened in the logs. That's because it is a stateless self-contained token that doesn't have to hit the database to detect who is who. That information is embedded in it. Now, of course, if this was wrong, so if the first letter was A, you would get and unauthorized. So it has to be the right one and it should not be expired if you want it to actually work. Now let's see the refreshing part. So I'm going to go here and grab the refresh token. And what this will allow me to do is go to the refresh endpoint. So we had register, which is a post, login, which is a post, and then refresh, which is a post, all automatically, by the way. I can paste that token and what's going to happen is the token will be taken. And if it is valid, it will be refreshed. So we're going to get a new token to use over here and a new refresh token as well. So we can go here and use that and that also works. And all that is done simply by having this map identity API, taking that user into account and all the details of that user. And as you can see over here, a lot of stuff are actually happening behind the scenes with a login endpoint being mapped, the register endpoint being mapped, a group being created over here, uh, also, the refresh endpoint is here. And there's also other stuff like confirm email is also added. The recent confirmation email, forgot password, reset password. All of those endpoints or even manage are actually added automatically as well as two-factor authentication and things like info over here. So if I was to go here and say um, manage and then info, I should get all the details about my token. All that without you having to do 
anything. Of course, a lot of this is actually customizable, so you can actually make it whatever you want it to be, but you get tons of things out of the box, which previously was very, very confusing to set up. Plus, this can be used easily on everything. It doesn't have to be just minimal API or just MVC or just whatever. You can apply it to whatever you want. So finally, it is simple. But now I want to know from you, what do you think about this? And do you think this is a step in the right direction? Would you wish that they did something in a different way? Leave a comment down below and let me know. Well, that's all I have for you for today. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, keep coding.